Hi y'all, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Pam. Hi, I'm Ann. Hi, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from Austin, Texas because it's Happy Woolly Wednesday! Hey everyone, happy Wednesday and happy spring! It yes. feels like spring here, right? It's beautiful. Yes. Is, it, yes. is it all right with you, Hannah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, I don't do cold weather. So these Texas girls can't handle the cold, but it is so beautiful here, and we're ready for a spring-themed day, and we have some special guests coming this week too, yeah, right? We do. We're going to make some dolls this week, so we're so excited to welcome some of our friends in here just tomorrow, and the fairies have been super busy. They have some fun surprises for you today, so we're going to get started. <laughs> Thanks for being here, everyone. We are Living Felt Austin. <laughs> we are Living Felt Felting Supplies here in Austin, Texas, and this is what we like to do on Wednesdays: is hang out with our friends. I'm gonna queue up my page here so that I can see all of you. And if you're watching our video, it should say 321 Wooly Wednesday, and you know you're in the right one. If you can't see us for any reason, then refresh your page or click on videos. And I'm going to get to where I can see us too. Can you all see us? I don't. Mm -hmm. And we're in the group? We are in the group. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to refresh here. Um, we have some fun stuff to share with you guys today. There we are. And I want to say hi to, to just a few people. Oh, I see Terry and I see Cherie. Um, Let's see who else is with us today. Thank you all for being here. There's Pat, Heidi, and Robin, Lynn, Heather, Waikie. Oh, this is so awesome. So nice to see you all. I hope it's feeling spring-ish wherever you are. I know some of our friends are still getting our Easter's and it's very cold, but we are sending some blue skies and warm winds and singing birds your way because we have a lot. It's absolutely gorgeous here in Central Texas. And if you're thinking about visiting Texas sometime, you should come in March or April, for sure. The, be the girls are nodding. It's the <laughs> best time to be here, for sure, for sure. So, big hearts to you all. Hey, listen, we have some really fun stuff to show you today. And the first thing we're going to share with you are two fun new specialty designer bundles that are based on fashion 2018 springs <laughs> colors. So we've had a lot of fun with these and I'm going to let Hannah kick it off. Hi everyone, how are y'all doing? This is going to be one of our new big bundles. This is our spring bundle. And starting with our merino top colors, we have zinnia, lagoon, citron, violet, and red. We also have two of our merino top silk blends, one in mango and one in our honeydew. Now when it comes to our beautiful bling fibers, we have a violet tussa silk, a garnet silk hankies, um, a little bit of our citrus bamboo top, and one of our newer Angelina fibers is going to be lemon sparkle, our lagoon nips, as well as the kiwi, uh, sorry, silk waist. So thank you that out. Now these colors are from uh, Spring Fashion Dare to be Bold and um, Dare to be Bold, right Anne? But we think that's a really boring name so we're opening it up for names and um, we will read through the names today. That's what we want to get. We hope to capture the names from this live broadcast. And whosoever name is picked will pick the first person. Whosoever name is picked will win three things from this assortment. So pitch out your ideas. We'd love to see what you think it should be called. And now we have a second spring bundle, which oddly doesn't seem like spring, but man, we love it anyway. So I'm going to let Ann show you that one. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. My name is Ann and I'm going to show you our, the second new spring bundle. We're calling this Bohemian Dream. And starting up here with the merino top, we have got Ballerina, this is Coco, Bordeaux, this is Marigold and Purple merino top. We have got Black Current merino silk blend and Pueblo merino silk blend right here. This is the Tessa silk hankies. This is the Iris Sari silk waist. Nutmeg Tessa Silk, 
pumpkin bamboo top, onion wool neps, and this is our one of our newest colors of Angelina, and it's a plum. Plum Angelina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here it is. So pretty. Isn't it just gorgeous? <laughs> Bordeaux matches your hair, Anne. That's what Karen it does. thought. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like my colors. <laughs> Mine too. Oh, I love that one. Thank you, Anne. Absolutely. So these colors were these bundles actually are based on, like I said, so spring fashion came up with these color assortments for spring and summer 2018 and of course when I saw the bohemian dream I just fell in love with it and it reminded me of that purse I made last fall which is pre it's pretty close so this is the purse I made last fall and I'm gonna call it my bohemian now my <laughs> bohemian dream purse um, and I, of course I made it with silks from my my stash bin these are just all thrift store silk inserts and um, the inside I used a pink a pink silk as well. Um, so we shared this on a Wooly Wednesday sometime last year. But we wanted to pitch these colors out there to you and see, man, it'd be so fun to see what somebody makes with these bundles. We're thinking this would make a really fun big tote bag or purse or something. So we're gonna watch for your names. Are we getting any fun ones so far? Well, I'm sure they're all fun, but. They're all fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Joanne says, April Hi. Um, <laughs> Becky says spring forward, uh, we oh. got spring alive. <laughs> these, spring are fun, these are fun names y'all, so we're going to have to look at them and, and vote a little bit. And so we will get those on the website. Our goal will be to get them on the website by tonight, and if not, then we'll have them on by the end of day tomorrow. Um, but we literally are just barely staying up with ourselves. <laughs> Okay, so fun. So, as some of y'all know, um, someone says, can I please see Bohemian, what does it say? Oh. Dream Closer. Mm -hmm. Okay, before we jump forward, and if there's any other questions, we'll show it here. This camera. You see that? So these are the Merinos, the Merino silk blends, and then all the blings are up front. Does that work, Becky? Okay. So fun, so fun. Spring alive, spring sprung. Thanks y'all for playing. Can't wait to see what all those names bring forward. So some of y'all know that we have our doll workshop this week and I'm grateful to say it's small. We kept the number small so it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to seeing what everybody makes. That's a really cool thing about a kit or a project is everyone brings their own flavor to it. And Cherie Davidson asked if I would bring some of my dolls and talk a little bit about how I approach making a doll. And for those of you who are new to our Wooly Wednesday broadcast, we like to make it interactive. Anne is happiness on the group page here, and so she is receiving all input and questions. So you can pose any questions and she'll feed them to me. And I, so I want it to be a little interactive and you help drive what you want to see. So we're going to look at the dolls and I'll share a few things about approach, um, maybe a few things you haven't thought of, and then we're going to look at the Angelina film and we'll make some fairy wings together. So, okay, we'll make, we'll make a pair of fairy wings for those who want to try it. Anything I should address, Ian, before we jump for ahead? Okay, so why don't I start it with my newest doll, Ona. We'll start with her since she's the, the, new, the new love for me. Um, this is my latest doll, and I haven't weighed her yet. Her name is Ona. Does she show up okay? She's a little light keeper, and her little lantern um, glows in the dark, and so does her hair. Her hair glows in the dark. I refrained from making her teeth glow in the dark. <laughs> I, did, I thought about it. Um, and her hat is removable. I'm not, I won't take it off today, but it's not, you know, it's not needle felted to her head. And then I'll just show you her wings. Does that show up good? Um, do I need to move different? We'll just, I'll show her wings and then here she is. So, um, 
Her little hands are very strong and she is poseable, of course. She can hold on to stuff because she's made with a wire armature. And she's just made just for fun. I mean, she, she just is this little fairy that came to me and I had to kind of bring her to life in my studio, which is where she'll live most of the time. Um, so, thank y'all for all the love. Yes? A couple of our felting friends want to know how did you make her lantern and hair glow in the dark? Oh, I, you know what, I just used um, glow paint. Did I bring it? I brought it. Hold on. <laughs> Let me put her down. I brought it for you. Um, I discovered this stuff. I discovered this stuff when I made my big fairy wings. And if y'all haven't seen that, you can go to our YouTube channel. But a couple of years ago, I made a Nuno Felt art bra for a charity. And I made big fairy wings with pantyhose. And this is the stuff I used. It's called Glow. You show up? Can you see it? So it's it's just like it's just like goes on like any other paint you know that you dispense from a little spout and I did put some on her wings but I decided to not overdo it so that is how I made her hair and her lantern glow her lantern is made from a silk cocoon um, and then I wrapped some organza around it so this is a little silk cocoon I didn't want it to look perfectly like a cocoon, so I wrapped silk organza around it and um, added glue because I wanted it to look kind of irregular. And then, um, then I applied the glow paint and then I just ran the, the thread through. And this same thread here ties her pants on so it kind of all matches together. Fun. What else can I answer? Anything about her that you want to know? Uh, she's getting a lot of love. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. So why don't I show you, um, yes. And, uh, Becky, there is a question. Okay. Becky wants to know uh, what her top and jacket are made of. Mm -hmm. Okay, so her top and jacket are different. Um, her jacket would be removable if I took her wings out. Um, so this jacket, if I'll just hold this up right here, if you can see how delicate that is, that is our Margolon silk. Where do I go? This way? Okay, that's our Margolon silk. And I hand dyed the silk and then I applied the fiber. Can you see? This way? Okay, I hand dyed the silk and then I applied the fiber. And the fiber is actually applied on this side, which was originally what I thought I was going to go for was like a brown jacket with green, you know, along the edges. But once I put it on her, I just liked the green better. So that is Nano felted delicately. Um, I wasn't trying to over shrink it, I wanted it to look wispy. Now her top is actually a single layer of pre-felt. So our 19 micron pre-felt, I'll just open her up a little bit. Our 19 micron pre-felt, I peeled it in half to make a single layer. And then I needle felted a little green on there. You probably can't see it, but I wanted it not to be a pure color. And then I just needle felted it onto her body. But I left this part loose, so it's, you know, looks like a top is actually on her. Mm -hmm. And let's see, as Sharon wants to know, can we see her eyes closer? Can sure. talk about your eye options? Sh sure. You know, eyes, eyes are just totally up to you. Just with, I think it was with Naked Guy is the first time that I decided to use um, glass eyes in a doll. And her eyes are just pure black glass. So we have two cameras here. So for the moment, why don't I hold up one? I'll, I'll hold up Naked Guy also, and then I'll show you on a couple of smaller dolls also. So am I focused? Are we close enough? These are... Large glass eyes, just in black. Can you tilt Una back just a little bit? Okay. So those are just large black glass eyes, and I can show you on, on him what we do. But let me show you on a little doll, too. On this little uh, witchy, I used green um, glass eyes. These are probably, are these a size 9, Anne, from the shop? These are just like a size 9, as opposed to 11, right? Let me oh, hold yeah. them up here. These are um, glass eyes in green on my little witchy gal. I don't know if you can see those up close, but I also did trim her, I trim her eye with black, 
you know, her eyelid with black. I trimmed her eyelid with black. So glass eyes, let's see, this little, this little munchkin has um, black glass eyes too. Where do I go? Back? Um, he has black glass eyes too. And I just like, because I kind of like foresty kind of beings, so I like how the glass eyes look. You may not want that, and I didn't want doll eyes. Doll eyes look very humanoid, and I'm not really going for that look. Um, doll eyes are quite a bit more expensive and they don't get very large in size at an affordable price. But we can look at some wool eyes too. I'm not really, the comments aren't staying up for me. I don't know where we are. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. Okay, so Marjolaine says she can use brown and blue glass eyes on the dog she's working on. And my tip for the blue eyes especially is to paint the backs of them white. If you paint the backs of them white, then when you put them in the wool, they'll still look bright. But you'll notice if you just put those eyes in the wool like I did with my witch, which was intentional, um, they kind of get buried in the wool and they lose, they lose the color because light isn't flowing through them. But if you paint the back of colored eyes white, they'll reflect more. So I'm going to show just a few eyes of dolls of different size. So this is, this is, uh, this is just head guy. <laughs> He's just a head. And this is a little gal. Um, so I'll just try and show two different. Where do I go? Up? Okay, just so you can see, these are wool eyes, which is all I ever did in the beginning were wool eyes. Here's like a little version, so I'll switch these. Um, get myself out of the way. Wool eyes are fun, and they're actually pretty easy. Back. They're actually pretty easy to do, and I'm happy to give you just a couple of tips on those. So do those show up okay for you guys? Um, Okay, so and let me show, let's see. So like, I brought in these guys just to, to also show eyes. These guys have almost the same eyes on a dark doll and on a brown doll, sort of a tannish doll. So let's see if I can show them in there. They have almost the same eye colors. Can you see? Where do I go? Green hat, yes. Um, Where do I go? Back just a little bit. Oh, perfect. Can you see the eyes? So these are the same. So now I'm gonna switch them between the two. Can you see them? Uh, Santa hat and, or Santa. Where do Green I go? Hat, not so much. Tilt him. Okay, and then this guy here. Can you see those green eyes? Maybe back a little bit. Okay. So I just wanted to show you, um, you know, it's fun. To, it's fun to put some color. It's fun to put some color in the eyes, and it's probably easier than you might think. Um, oh, Nosy. That's a good name for him, Sharon. Nosy. I, you know, I liked him, but I never found, I never put him on a body. Actually, he was in a baby elf suit. Do you remember? Oh my God, that was so cute. I need to get, I need to get myself one. So, eyes. Now, I'm going to show you creepy guy eyes. Like, he's like Muppet Man. I don't love him. Um, but I tried to see what would happen if I gave a doll, like, I started giving him eyelashes and eyebrows. And then the next thing you know, honestly, he looked like my brother. And I don't know why. I know. I don't know why that kind of made it weird because he started to look real and I like super fakey. Now, he doesn't look real. He's like Muppet Dude. But anyway, Muppet Dude has one eyebrow. So I'll hold him back here so you can see him. Um, but as soon as I was putting the eyelashes on, he just started to look like, I don't know, there was too much happening in there. I didn't like it. Um, but eyes are super, super easy to do, and the small ones are actually easier than you think. And Karen Cott asks, do you glue the glass eyes in? Oh, the glass eyes. For the glass eyes, I don't. I don't glue them in. You, I guess because I teach so much, I'm always showing, um, and I don't like... I don't like glue mishaps. Glue to me, like I seem to lose control of glue. Um, but the way I inset the eyes and build the eyelids, they're going to stay in unless someone goes to pick them out. So let's look at Naked Guy. Um, they're in there. Okay, those eyes are really inside there and they're encased in the eyelids, 
which I want to say is the one thing I notice most when people are just starting to make faces and dolls is that they kind of miss the eyelids. And if you miss an eyelid, your doll just looks like cra a little crazy. <laughs> so put eye put eyelids on them. And I just I won't. You don't have to watch. He doesn't mind though. <laughs> I won't make you watch. But it's really buried in there. So here he is, one eye, one eye. So it's really kind of deep in there. I could put my whole finger in there and it's really kind of deep. And I, you know, first, you know, I inset the eye, so I'll show you here. When I start to build a face, um, you kind of inset the eye so that there's a bit of an eye socket. Can you see that sideways? There's kind of an eye socket coming off the face. And then I build the eyelids and then you would drive a hole in there with your 36 or 32 needle and inset these in. And you just want to cut, cut them really sharp so that they poke through the wool. Awesome. And so just to confirm, you're making the eyelids before putting the glass eyes I do. I, I do most of the time. Um, you can build the eyelids on after, but it just kind of helps me with the positioning of everything. Um, and or you could put the you know the bottom one on last or something, but it kind of helps me with the positioning of everything. And Fraser wants to know: um, Do you prefer felting your eyes with wool or using glass eyes? Mm. And why? Yeah, I think it just depends on the the being. Like this is a this. It's not like now I'm doing them all glass. Like this is a little. Um, fairy that I'm working on and she's going to have wool eyes. So I think it just depends on the nature of the being. You know, it's totally subjective. And just for fun, I brought in one of my oldest, and I brought in two of my oldest dolls too, but this is one of my oldest heads. And um, she is so under felted that it's hilarious. If you squished her, you would think she's like a marsh, a marshmallow is probably firmer than her head. But I made a whole series of heads. They were, I just called them stemlins because they were just on a long, like stem and she was like my little witchy poo kind of character can you see her um so she's kind of fun all jowls you know and her super chubby face and she's like an inspiration now for a current doll so um glass or wool it, it just depends on the doll i'm making and mm -hmm. lillian wants to know how do you get that deep socket without over felting oh i'm felting hard what's over felting you know i mean it's underneath it's underneath the eye so how can you over felt it like i don't understand i kind of don't understand the question you want it to be so firm that when you poke your 36 needle in there or your 32 it'll make a hole you want it so firm that when you poke, you know, when you poke in there, that it's not going to just keep caving in on you. So I'm felting pretty firm. This is a pretty firm head. And you want it to be pretty firm so that you can continue to add stuff to it and it doesn't cave in. My early dolls like this were so, were so soft and squishy that as soon as you go to add something, it'll just cave in on you, especially hair or something. You lose wool surface. So don't worry about over felting what's going to be behind an eye. You want that nice and firm so that you can poke a hole in there and poke your eye through it too. If the wool's too squishy, sometimes it's hard to get the eye to poke through. You want resistance when you go to poke that uh, eye wire in. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Sharon wants to know, how big are the eyes that you're using? Oh, some of these are probably 14s and bigger than we've been carrying. Um, but if there's a demand, I'll carry them for you all. I really will. So some of them are, are 14. Some of them are 12. Some of them are 14. Uh, uh, one of my dolls, I think I even, or critters, I even used one bigger than that. Um, we'll carry larger eyes if you want them. I just need to know that there's a demand. And uh, Jalen wants to know, for the faces, are you starting with a firm felted round ball and building the shapes and features as you go? Yes, I start so. How do I start? So a couple of tips I'll give you all. And I'm going to pose a question while I propose this. I've been working on some videos uh, for doing redoing my doll tutorial. Are y'all interested in like an online doll class where you have the videos or you download the videos? Um, but usually I've done a PDF, more PDF friendly, and this would be video, more video heavy. But it would be kind of involved, so I want to know if you all would want like a dedicated class. So let me pull out a couple of heads. Uh, we're getting a lot of yeses to that. Oh, already. okay, okay. So 
For those of you who don't, for those of you who just kind of want to jump in and, and get started, um, this is an this is an example of a of a starting head, and I did it to to make the shapes. So what happens is as the face for me starts to come alive, I realize they need more forehead or they need more back here or they need more chin. Oh, you know what? I didn't bring Alda. Would you grab Alda for me? She's one of my favorites. Um, thank you, Anne. So, but the thing I want to tell you is I find a lot, I find it a lot um, more challenging sometimes to cover, to cover the white piece by piece with cheeks and nose and such, and a little bit easier to cover the whole thing with my, whatever's going to be my skin tone, and then start to build up the features off there. Just an idea, just something to think about. Thank you. So see, some of my dolls, and y'all have seen her, you know, they get kind of crazy. And she started with a small head, but I knew she was going to have a huge mouth and huge cheeks. So um, she did start with, you know, a round base, but I knew she was going to get this big, and I knew she was going to have a huge nose. So that, you know, was definitely planned to come out this way, but all the features are built on after starting with that base shape. And I always just make a, make a ball on my wire. That's how I begin. Okay. I'm getting a lot of yeses. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, because, you know, the way I like to teach is I like to leave things really open. Like, rather than say, let's make a fairy or let's make a this doll, I like to teach you the fundamentals and the building blocks and just see where you'll go with it. Because everybody is so creative and so inventive, there's no reason to make something I would make. I want to teach you how to make what you want to make. Um, so, on the, in the spirit of that, I want to share with you two of my very early dolls, just to also get you thinking outside the box. Anne's going to turn back our one camera, and then I'm going to pull them off the wall, just, just so you can see. So, this here is um, Romani. Does she show up now? So, this is from a palm fluorescence that was laying on the ground where I lived. I lived on this huge ranch in California. And um, I'll take her off in a minute. And this is Lena, who is a mermaid-ish. And she is made over driftwood, which was all my original dolls were like made over found objects. So she's sort of mermaid-esque, and she belongs to my husband. Um, this is actually stuff from the beach. So these are just little, you know, ocean grasses. And then her little crown is a rockweed. I'll show you that. Can you see? I can't tell what your hands are doing. Sorry. <laughs> in a little closer. Uh-huh. Does it show? This is a rockweed uh, on her head. And so I just wet felt. This is a piece of driftwood under here. And when I saw it, I just saw the tail. And um, I wet felt it over that and then drilled a hole through the wood to put her head on. Now her head is floppy and honestly her head is, you know, kind of squishy because I didn't know any better. She is probably about 17 years old. Been hanging around for a long, long, long time. And all my faces were white in the beginning. Um, and I want to show you how she hangs. I don't even remember how I attached this with screws or something. But this is just a leather cord with wooden beads and it's very strong, it's lasted her whole life, and I don't know how I attached it on there. Are we showing up, Anne? What's the deal? You can try and back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Focus a little more there. Okay, so I just wanna show you the, the mounting on, on a couple of these so you can think about pieces if you wanna kind of get outside the box and make something really different. And her eyes, um, I suppose I could give some tips on eyes if you want. Let's see, are there any questions before I go to the next one? Questions? Comments? Not coming through so far. Okay. Everybody loved Alda and loved Lena and Romani. Okay, and then so I'm going to show you Romani because she has some unique eyes. I don't know if I'll get her back up there. Maybe. Here we go. So Romani, um, she's, she's really weird, you know, and she's just for me, but I'm going to get in here and show you um, her eyes. They're kind, of, they're kind of wild. Can you see her eyes? No. Where do I go? 
It's not focusing. It's not focusing. Hmm. What about over here? Can you see your eyes? Mm -hmm. So I was telling Anne before we got started that um, I used to have a friend who had gold eyes, and she knows somebody that has gold eyes too. Um, so what's interesting about her, she's also wet felted over the palm frond. And what I do, um, Cherie asked me how do I approach dolls, and my answer to that is that they approach me. <laughs> and so what happens is I usually sense a little energy, or in this case, I just saw this laying on the ground, and I just saw her face on it, like, instantly. Um, and how she hangs, I, I masked that too, but this is one of those standard swivel picture hooks, and I just screwed it right into the back of her, if you can see that, and then I felt it over it, so that it's kind of hidden. And she's been in a show or two. Can we get a, another close up look at that? It's at the swivel? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's gonna, it's buried under wool, so it's hard to see, but it's like the U shape. It's the U shaped hook, and I screwed it into her wood and then covered it with wool. So it's masked on purpose. You can't see it real well. For, you can't see it real well intentionally. Mm -hmm. And Karen wants to know, how do you preserve the palm frond? The thing, oh, I, what I wanted to tell you is the interesting thing about material from nature is when you bring it in, it pretty much stops degrading. So this was, like I said, lying on the ground in the California coast, and so was this, was, was on the beach. But once you bring it in, it doesn't continue to break down. So as long as it's in a climate controlled space, it's not going to be you know, bringing, taking on and releasing moisture over and over. So it's really stable, <laughs> interestingly. Uh, and uh, Laura wants to know, have you ever made a doll with movable jaw? I haven't, but that's just not, um, I've not made a doll with a movable jaw. I'm not trying to make like a puppet, I suppose, you know? You know who did was Charlene Lundgren in California. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Okay, I lost it. I need help. <laughs> Will you put her on the table? Yeah. <laughs> she's down. <laughs> she's, she's retired now. So I've not made a doll with a, a movable jaw. It's just never been an intention. But I think Charlene Lundgren did made a doll with a movable jaw. Cool. Okay, so what else can I answer? What else do you want to, any other doll questions that you want tips on? Yes. Kim mm -hmm. Mobacher has one. She says, hi Marie, how do you proportion hand sized head? Is there a ratio slash formula? I'll tell you what I do, which is not very scientific. Um, and my dolls aren't like humanoid accurate. So keep in mind that my dolls are, my dolls are strange proportions. They're not like, nor I think a normal woman is maybe five and a half half heads tall and a man is maybe six and a half heads tall. I'd have to look that up in my old Jack Ham drawing book. But I don't worry about that since I mostly do elemental beings and fantasy beings. But I do kind of do a thing when I decide how big to make their fingers. And this is what I do. I take my own finger and I put it across my mouth or my hand from here to see how high, how high does my hand go or how big is it compared to my face and how do I want that to look on my doll. So like for Stash, um, I really wanted him to have really pronounced hands. You know, I wanted them to be, to be big and a little almost, you know, I wanted them to be spindly. I wanted him to have big spindly fingers. But for the most part, I don't make them quite I don't make their hands quite so big for the face, but I do compare it to how big is it compared to their mouth or how big is it compared to their cheek. As an example, Ona's hands are very delicate compared to her face. They're very delicate and I wanted it to be that way on purpose. Does that show? I wanted her hands to be very delicate and very small. And what I wanted to point out to you is that watch cartoons and notice how many of the cartoons are busy, you know, in the hand department. So with um, more playful dolls, you can simplify that a little bit. And Marjolene shares that uh, she received some advice about, about this, and she said that um, a spread out human hand would actually span across the front of your face. Mm -hmm. And I tend to make mine smaller because I don't want my hand, I think with a doll, see I like super skinny arms. 
I like skinny arms and big ears and pointy noses, so mine are all wacky. And I would say, if you start to compare it, I always compare things to your own body. Like, did you know your foot apparently is about as big as this length? But my doll's feet are never as big as their forearm. Like, your foot is... Yeah, if you put the bottom of your foot on your forearm, it would go the distance. Something like that. And so just decide whether you want to, you know, tone that down or match the humanoid, which I don't. I never want to match the human size. And mm -hmm. Linda Crouch Rufkin wants to know, how many hours does it take to make a, a doll of um, Alda or, or Una size? I don't know. I'm going to say, you know, Ona, I don't know. I might have 15 hours into her. I don't know for sure because I do a lot of listening, like when I'm making a doll. And I only work like many of you after work. So I'm working like in an hour, maybe a two hour stint. So like, when was it the other night? Was it last night? No, not last night. Last night I made Angelina film. But like the other night, all I made were these fingers. Like in one evening, that's all I did. You know, and I had time to spare. It didn't take me all night, but that's all I did was make these fingers. Um, or like I might make two heads, you know, in a night to get me started. So I don't know, but I, and I don't do it in a weekend. I don't like bang out a doll in a weekend. But I would say Ona was made across just a couple of weekends, probably. Devin mm -hmm. Carroll wants to know, could you use a mini dress form for the base of a doll? A mi I don't know what a mini dress form looks like. I mean, I suppose you could use anything you want. Think about people who make clay art dolls. They sew a body and stuff it. And then the arms are, you know, the clay or porcelain and the head is a clay or a porcelain. But the whole inner body is just a sewn form. You can use anything you want. Trust me, I look at, you know, stuff that I'm recycling all the time, whether it's an oatmeal box, you know, or is it like, think like, couldn't that be a doll body? Use anything that inspires you, for sure. Mm-hmm. Cool. Any other questions? I agree. Becky says it's all about your own creativity. I agree. Mm-hmm. Fun, fun, fun. And so, um, we, did a, we did a segment on doll clothes before, but I'll just show you, let's see, do I have these? The, um, these were the templates for Ona's. This was Ona's hat, was wet felted over this form. And this was her coat, was wet felted over this form. Because I wasn't gonna shrink it very much. If I was gonna shrink it a bunch, then I would have made it bigger. But I was barely gonna felt it because I wanted it to be super delicate. So if you learn to wet felt, your dolls can you know, really expand the way they present, especially having things that are that are loose and flowing on them. Super, super fun. Mm -hmm. What's the question? Devin says something, something. Oh, yeah. Uh, just going back to the dress form, um, like the one in the corner. Yeah, I don't see why not. You can use anything you want. You can use absolutely anything you want. I have a garden spear that was supposed to be a doll, one of like a garden trellis that I wanted to be a doll and didn't know that. It hangs, it's in the shop now, it was always gonna be a greeter. Listen, I wanted to offer y'all who wanna make wool eyes, I wanted to give you just a, a real quick tip. And that is um, to get yourself a couple of magic bags blues, your blues, your greens, of course your grays and blacks and whites, but these right here are just gold for making eyes. So when you do go to make your eyes, you know, keep a little bag of your little bits that are left over of blues or greens or whatever color inspires you, because what you can do is mix up the colors. I mix up the colors by hand together and place it right in the eye when I make the eyes. So, these little grab bags are just wonders when you sit down to needle felt, especially like something like that, like make an eye. And Carla wants to know, is the bridge of the nose built up first and then tapered down the sides? Oh, well I do noses in a very specific way, but let me show you my most regular nose is here. So here's my, my most regular nose. So I, I don't quite understand the question, but I do have a very specific way I make a nose and I make it all as one unit. It's all one unit, nothing is added on to the exterior. Um, and I'll show you. Uh, I'll sh you know, in that class I'll show you exactly what I do. I think I've demonstrated noses a couple of times, but I build my noses all as one unit, even if they're pointy. Well, no, they're pointy. The pointy is an add-on, and I'll show you how to make those too if you're into pointy noses like I am. Whether they're big or they're little, 
all of my dolls pretty much take the same the same process no matter what size they are mm -hmm. how do you make pointy noses so donna the quick answer to that is i make a regular nose and then i add a point onto it that's the quick answer mm -hmm. yeah. how would you create eyelashes um, after after creepy doll I probably wouldn't do that a lot <laughs> so I know some people have done it and that's what I was trying to do with this guy is create eyelashes and I didn't like it at all so now I tend to just put like a dark line a dark line of fiber to kind of capture that and Susie Kohler wants to know if you use beads for eyes do you sew them in or just or would you just use the eyelids. Oh, if I used beads, which I don't, I've never used beads for like a doll doll, I've only used them for the animals, I sew them through the back of the head, which is another argument to make your head really firm because then you can sew the eye in very tight and the head not distort. So you need the head to be very, very firm before you do that. And Wyoma wants to know, would power pole make the eyes a bit more shiny or realistic? I don't think so. No, Paver Paul does not make wool shiny. Not, I mean, not unless you glob a glob a glob it on and then you're gonna get it all over everything. So um, Paver Paul, when it's really piled on, like especially for like a bird's talons or something, is really interesting. But when you just apply it to wool, once it dries, this is what it looks like. So this, this little finger has Paver Paul on it. Um, and I've just started doing that because my fingers get handled so much and roughed up on all my dolls. So it doesn't make it shiny. No, nope. glue wouldn't make it shiny. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now, Sheree kicked this off. Did Sheree, have I answered your questions and are you watching? Um, I feel like we jumped around a bit um, on these dolls and I don't know that I answered what you wanted to see. And she asked what uh, supplies I would recommend in the beginning. And Cherie makes amazing dolls. I know some of y'all have seen them. She builds a body out of core wool and doesn't use armature. And then she uses fibers including our, C, uh, our MC1. Okay, so she says yes, good. Um, cool, okay. So I'm gonna keep working on the doll class and I have started on that. Anne's got one more thing for me. Yes, Anne. <laughs> Luann asks, did I miss you showing the witch hanging on the background? Oh uh, yeah, we showed the witch. I'll show her real quick. Um, she's been put away for a little while and we showed her last fall. Yeah, because I made her I made her last fall. So she hangs And I can tell you a little bit about her real fast. Um, so she is needle felted just like all the other dolls. Her skirt was wet felted. Her broom pieces well, just are just basically power palled into place. Her booties were wet felted and her hat was wet felted. And her, this is MC1. And this, uh, this part here is just a pre felt and then black, black MC1. And this is just a twig from my yard that I basically painted black. And she's not attached to the stick at all. She's just sitting on there. There happens to be a little part of the branch that sticks off that I've like hooked her leg around. So that's kind of how she stays on. <laughs> I might have tied her on there. I'm not sure. Um, but she's really fun to make. And I brought... Did I bring her hat? Oh, I didn't bring her hat? Oh, I did. Okay, I brought her hat. This was her hat template right here, wet felted. And her booties were way too big. So this is her booty template. Her booties were way too big, which is perfect because I tied them on real elfin like, which is like I liked. You know, they actually turned out perfect the way I like, real elfin. So she's like an elfin witch. Very elfin witch. Anything else? Donna Dirk, Sharon asks, um, how did you do the wings on the new fairy you showed earlier? Okay, we're going to do that now. So let's make some fairy wings together. And we'll, I'm going to show you right now, we'll look at this Angelina film. I'll show you just a couple of colors and then we'll make a, some wings right here. How's that sound? Heart to all you gals. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Um, so this is uh, the Angelina film. If you've seen the Angelina fiber, both the gals showed you some Angelina fiber in our bundles. And it's very wispy and straight and interesting. And you can melt it with an iron. And I actually forgot my iron today. But you can melt it with an iron and it binds to itself. 
Anne, would you grab our melted samples? Um, we have some that we ironed a whole bunch. And this is, I just made some little tiny samples. This is the Angelina film. Um, so you can see in concentration, you can see quite a bit of color, but then when you hold it up by itself, it's just virtually see-through. What's interesting is once you crumple it, you can kind of see what colors it catches. Um, and I'll just kind of move it around in the light. This color, by the way, is called fuchsia. And, but it does catch a bit of gold and green, which is interesting. And then this is a little tiny melted sample. Um, and I just did a, like a little quick melt on a stem so that we could see what it looks like in the light and stuff. And what does Anne have? Oh, Anne has the Angelina fiber. Thank you. The Angelina fiber, this is the fuchsia, isn't it? Right here. This is that same stuff, but this is the Angelina fiber melted. So Angelina is a polyester. It fuses to itself when you heat it. Um, and you can heat it and then even cut out shapes. So you could make wings out of these shapes or a little ribbon or I don't know what. Look, it doesn't felt, okay? It's just bling. It's just bling. And so making wings just, I couldn't resist the film for making wings. And so I'll show you how we do that. Now, I don't know how many, um, I don't know how many colors we have of the film. But I have a whole little I have a whole little bowl here full of different colors that we made samples of. So the yellow, the two whites, the purple. Ona's wings is made from Forest Blaze. That's a very interesting color. So Forest Blaze, if you bought it in the Angelina film, is this gorgeous kind of brown. And it kind of, I don't know how it looks. In person it looks brown, and then it kind of catches a green hue. That's why I'll move it around for you to see. But when you heat it, it turns purple. So Ona's wings are made from forest blaze even though they look purple. And that's really fun to see how it changes once you melt it. So let's hurry and make a wing together. We've got 10 minutes. We can do this. And Kate wants to know, do you melt the Angelina between paper? Um, the Angelina fiber, yes, you can put it between a paper towel, you can put it between wax paper, um, it will take a stamp impression, so if you have textured paper towels and you put it through paper towels and iron it, it'll take on the texture of those paper towels. You could iron it um, with fabric underneath or a stamp underneath and it'll take that impression. But let's make an Angelina film wing together. And Anne's going to turn down our cameras. And oh, let's see if I can see. What I have here is this is just some uh, parchment baking paper because the tool I'm going to use gets really hot. And this right here is a wing I made earlier from Dragonfly Garden, we named it. And I'll just show you this color. It looks in person, it looks very clear with a bit of a blue hue, but when you move it in the light, you can see a lot of magenta. And then once we melted it, most of the magenta seems to go away and it looks like this mysterious purple, like cleary purple. Can you see in there, Anne? Can this, is this camera zoomed in? You can zoom that one in. So let me show you the basic supplies. You need your Angelina film and you need wire or Ona's wings are actually made with twigs and I'm going to tell you how you can see how I made her wigs, uh, wings after this. So these are made with wire and we're using the dragonfly film and a little bit of the plum Angelina fiber. And I have three heat sources here. So we're going to use a candle. We're going to use a stick of incense. You need a lighter. And I have a heat gun, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, okay. So what you'll do, are you, do I need to stop? Oh, and what gauge of wire is that? Oh, this is our uh, paddle wire. Is it 32? Uh, 22. Sorry, 22. This is our 22 gauge wire. As I said with Ona, her wings, these, these wings are made with twigs from my yard because I wanted them to be very irregular and woodsy looking. So those are actually made with twigs. 
Okay, so this is uh, just a quick way to twist the wire together. This is three pieces of wire, bend it in half bend it in half and then twist it together. Your Angelina film, you can have two pieces or one that you fold over. And if you don't want your wire to you want your wire to show through less, then just put some Angelina fiber on either side and it'll mask the wires a little bit. Ona's does not have any of this fiber in it. And we're going to fold it over. Now we're going to melt this together with my heat gun. So if you've got your volume turned up, now would be the time to turn it down. Because this is loud. This is a loud. This is a Wagner heat gun, courtesy of my dear husband. And so you don't want to burn your fingers. That's okay, I'll just go in this way. I'm too close to my fingers right now. It's hot, that's for sure, it's hot. This one's a little more magical than the other one. Okay, so we pretty much melted that down pretty good and that stuff inside kind of changes color. Now if you want to give your wings this really fancy, fancy shape like this, this is where your candle comes in. And the Kay Clement would like to know, would an embossing heat gun work okay as well? Yeah, people tell me that they use an embosser and I, I've seen people actually run it through an embossing machine. That's like a roller. Some people use an iron. Um, some people use the candle. But what I found is, so I don't know about that gun, but you want a heat gun that's really strong. Okay, someone's got to have a lighter. And I need help. I'm going to have them get me a lighter. Um, I can't believe I run out. That's how much I use my lighter. <laughs> I'm here without my lighter. You guys are going to forgive me. Okay, so I'm going to tell you while Anne's running to find me a lighter that if you want your wings to be really smooth, you can almost hold this perpendicular to the flame. If you want it to be a little more lacy like this, you can kind of pounce it over the flame, which will do. And I have another uh, video which I'm going to point you to. And and would you post a link to the um, fairy wings? One of the things I want to tell you that we have come up with is um, a template for fairy wings. Um, and if you can't find it, you can just go. Did you find it? Okay. Um, so Anne's posted a link to the fairy wings. Great. So we had um, 15 wing patterns that you can follow what from fancy fairy, fancy butterfly um, wings, bat wings, dragon wings that you can uh, model your wires after. And what you'll see, thank you. Okay, here we are. We have flame. What you'll see is that you can bend the wire to follow the wings. So here we go. We're going to melt this and I'm just going to pounce it in. This stuff will melt. It doesn't smell so bad. And what you can do is kind of pounce it in and it'll dip in in between where you have wire points. See how we're already shaping up? My two wings didn't match, by the way. I just, I just made each wing individually. You can have wire sticking off out if you want. You can have it, um, see how fast? Okay, so I'll, you can make them as lacy as you want and notice I'm just, my candle flame is a little bit low, but look how fun that shape is already. And then to make the holes, you can use an incense stick or um, something to that effect. An incense stick is going to make a real nice hole. I've also just used my twigs. So you can poke a hole and then if you hold it over the flame a little bit, it'll open up. See? Just like that. Does it show? I'll do a couple more. I'll, I'll do another one. There. We're stinking up our studio here. So this is a wing just kind of 
um, in the works and you can put as many holes as you want you just when you hold it over the flame it'll open it up a little bit and so you probably have a few trials that you won't totally love but what you can do um, is make your wings match best you can and then you can go back over them with your glow paint or you can use some like glitter you can use glitter paint or even some micro beads I got this fun collection of micro beads off Amazon and they were so cheap but I think they came all the way from China and <laughs> they did so Anna's gonna share if you need a heat gun a link to the heat gun if you care to see that and these fun little micro beads would add great great fun to these wings too um, and that's how fast it is now we posted a video on YouTube today for how to make the fairy wings and specifically how to make the ones that I made for Ona with the twigs and um, this is a similar one I made with wire for her and I see I started to put some glitter around there but I decided I liked the twigs better you can turn up um, and so if you go to the if you go to the Angelina page on our website you will see the video that I posted for how to make wings with twigs like Onus Mm -hmm. Yes, um, Kay asked, do you glue the microbeads? Yes, you can. You would glue the microbeads on. Apply glue and then um, you would just use like a squeeze out glue. Fun. Can you use the film to make a three dimensional object like a unicorn horn? Rachel, I have no idea. What I would think is that maybe if you sculpt the horn first, if you sculpted the horn first and then you wrapped it with a film and try and melt the film to it, maybe you can strip the film on. Um, but I can't, it doesn't seem like a sculpting medium. It says though that you can stitch it, you can stitch it, stamp it, of course, you know, cut it, crumple it, melt it. But I can't imagine that it would sculpt it. The Fairy Wings, if you would just link to the Angelina page. So Anne's going to link to the Angelina page and right at the top of the whole Angelina page is the link, oh, is the link for the fairy wing video and then the fairy wing templates are on there too. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jalen wants to know how are you attaching the wings to the body? Okay, to attach the wings to the body and Ona's, since I plunged them into her back, but what I recommend when you want to attach them to the body is leave one or two trailing wires down so that you can connect them and have a point. You should have a point left that you can work with and then shape your wings out. So something like this, but I would go longer. I would have a longer stem. With Ona, where did I do with my awl? Oh, I think I put it away. Um, with Ona, I poked a hole down her back, not straight in, but down, and I put the wings inside of like a little plastic straw. I actually cut the bottom of a pipette, so I had a little plastic sleeve. You could also use like um, heat shrink tubing. Heat shrink tubing can, can be put over them so that they're bound together because my wires were twisted and bumpy. That made a smooth uh, insert and will also allow me to take them in and out of her back. So give yourself some wire to work with and then um, experiment a little bit. I will tell you and you'll see on the video that the twig wings are super fragile compared to these. These can take some work, but twig wings are super fragile. Okay, anything else? No, that everyone is, is posting a lot of great stuff about the wings. Fun, 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 fun. Thank y'all for hanging out with us today and playing dolls and fairy stuff. The fairies, our fairies are going to come back. It's all smoky in here. Our AC is out, so thank goodness it's not too hot. The fairies are going to come back, and we're going to give away presents, which is just our favorite, favorite time hanging out with you guys. And uh, Speedy has woken up from his nap. <laughs> and the gals are going to come back. Need to make some fairies. Good, good, good. Well, I can't wait to see what y'all make. So the, the Living Felt Fairies are coming in and we're gonna give away some prizes. One girl pick first. Yay. Oh, yay. Okay. Alrighty. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Possibly. We'll see. <laughs> Laura Mignot. Yay. Right. Laura. Congratulations, Laura. What'd she win, Anne? Laura, you win. An armature assortment. Oh, <laughs> nice. super fun. <laughs> okay, who else? All right. Oh, way too many. There you go. We've got Luann Mac Johnston. All right. Oh, very nice. Congratulations, Luann. What did she win? Anne. She 
she wins two two ounce rolls of our MC1 batting. Very nice. Oh, right. oh me? I get it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you read it. Karen Cott. <laughs> Yay! Yes. You wish you win, Anne. She won some of our new Angelina film. Ooh. One of our one bag of Angelina. And then one Tessa Silk. Oh, super yeah. fun. You can make wings with the Tessa Silk or the film. So for the gals who won the wool and this pack right here, just email customer service and let us know what colors you would like. And we'll get those out to you this week. And as far as our new super bundles, <laughs> as far as our new super bundles, we'll do our best to get those online. And we'll be looking back this afternoon to see what names you came up with this one so that we can award a winner oh, nice. uh, for three items from that. That pack too. So that's all, all right. we have for this time, y'all. Thank, Thank you. Bye.